Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation of Pico Academy Off-Highway Edition, where we're going to be looking at picoscope, uh, oscilloscope applications to off-highway machinery. So my name's John Parker. I'm Distribution Sales Manager here at Pico Technology in the UK, and I'm joined today by... Ben Martins. Um, I'm an automotive application specialist, uh, however, doing less and less automotive stuff and more off-highway, which arguably is more fun. Great. So the idea of today is we're taking you really from quite basic. So we're going to talk you through what an oscilloscope is, um, how we operate it, how we capture our waveforms, and then we'll move on to some more complicated stuff. So we're looking at waveforms and how we can then um, start to diagnose issues using that. Um, so I'm going to be running through kind of the basics and I'm going to be doing the theory of each of the tests that we do. And then Ben's actually going to be working. You've probably noticed we've got a beautiful mini-ish digger in the background and we're actually we do some live testing here in the workshop so we can actually show you how we apply the picoscope kit um, off highway kit <coughs> onto onto the digger right let's move on and make a start okay so this is just a quick run through of what we're going to be working through today so we do start as i said right from the very basics so we're going to run through the software so how you download the software and the basic functionality within the software. Then we're going to run through the off-highway kits, so the hardware that you're going to need to start running these tests. And then we're going to move on to three sections um, in terms of diagnosing and working with picoscope. So we've got our diesel diagnostics there, so we're coming from basics, kind of injectors, moving through, through to more complex stuff right the way through to CAN networks. Then we're going to start to look on the hydraulic testing side of bits. Um, so I think for those of you working and operating with plant, you're going to find this most interesting. So how do we apply Picoscope to looking at hydraulic working in real time, in real life? So Ben's going to take us through that on the digger so you can actually see right under how we make the connections and obviously what you see within the waveforms. And then finally, we're going to have a whole section around preventative maintenance. We realise how important this is to you guys. So trying to highlight issues before before they become a problem out in the field. So you can actually, you know, run regular maintenance checks using Picoscope, you know, simple battery testing right the way through to crankcase pressure and pump health, of course, which is of vital importance. And then finally, we're just gonna take you kind of an overview back through where you can go and find more information in this presentation. So let's make a start. Um, and always with Pico Academy, we just try and start with a little thought I mean, our one here is very much the best, best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today, partly about preventative maintenance, but also learning new skills. Being able to apply Picoscope to issues that you see out in the field and to truly understand in deep detail what's going on within the systems, whether that's the engine side or whether that's on the hydraulic side, is going to pay you dividends in the future. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to see and understand just how valuable and powerful Picoscope is. Okay, so we're going to start with an introduction to Picoscope Diagnostics. So this right back at the beginning, if you don't know anything, um, it's worth remembering we have an app. So that's a great place to start. So if you haven't understood what Picoscope is just yet, download the app. Yes, it's more automotive than off-highway, but there's so much in there that's going to help you around what Picoscope is how you can test different components, particularly on the engine side of things, and also real-life applications. So whilst automotive, we do put off highway um, case studies in there as well. Um, but also where it's really, really um, powerful is looking at which kit to choose. We're going to run you through those today, but actually it's a really nice way to browse the kits through the app. So what is a diagnostic oscilloscope? We get asked this all the time. I mean, very simply, we can view any signal on a vehicle, be that on road or off highway. So we say anything with a wire, but we can also look at pressure and MVH signals as well. And we're running these signals through our oscilloscope. So there's our 4425A off highway edition. Um, for those of you familiar with Picoscope but haven't seen the off highway one before, it's the same scope on the inside. We've just got a a very much more robust rubber boot on the outside so it keeps kind of moisture and dirt and grime away from the scope on the inside. 
Um, so it's just a slightly, slightly different redesign of the casing. And we run those through the scope, those signals, and we create what we call a waveform. So a waveform is how we view the electrical signals or the pulse signal, anything we're viewing, we can see it on live in real time. And that creates the waveform. And a waveform is very simply, I mean, its simplest form is our multimeter signal, so our voltage or our amperage or our pressure, um, against time. And it just means we're plotting those signals against time. Um, and we're going up to 400 million samples a second. So it's really, really intricate detail. And as we go through the presentation, particularly as Ben starts to capture data live on the digger in here and obviously some other videos he's created off site, you will start to see just how important that level of detail is. So as I said, we've got three major types of signals. We can collect electrical signals, so be that sensors at the very basis, actuators, so everything that's working around the vehicle to make things happen right the way through to communication networks and growingly, increasingly, not just um, on-road but also off-highway, electric vehicle systems as well. So really anything with a wire we can capture the signals. We can also look at pressure um, and we're going to be looking at obviously the pressure side where we start to look at hydraulics today. So you'll see just how valuable being out of capture that pressure data is against time and the fact you can record it, you can keep it and save it for the future. And then also moving on, NVH, so noise, vibrations, harshness testing, becoming more and more importantly um, for the diagnostic process. Okay, we're just going to have a look at a really simple example here. This is a really nice animation, just short one. We're just going to run it through and in this you're going to see, obviously, in this case, a digger operating, but then how we made that connection um, and how we capture the waveform. So I'm just going to play short animation here. Okay, so hopefully you found that interesting. Um, and like I say, we're going to look at this live as well as we work through the presentation. So two parts that we're going to focus on now is going to be the software, and then we're going to move on to hardware. So our software, in terms of where to start, you go on wpicoauto.com. Be very careful. We have our sister company, which is Pico Tech. So if you put Picoscope in at Google, 
um, you will sometimes, Pico Tech comes at the top, make sure you download the software from Pico Automotive because within that you're going to get help and advice around guided tests of working with Pico and more importantly now you're getting off highway guided tests as well so a lot of what we're running through today that help and support is actually built in the software. Um, final thing to say about the software, it's free to download. There's no monthly subscriptions or fees. Um, it is completely free. And the only thing you really pay for with Pico is going to be the hardware. So the scope you buy today will actually be better in the future because our software is constantly evolving. So once you get to Pico Auto and our software download page, um, there's a number of little pieces of software here. Mostly today we're going to be dealing with PicoScope 7, which is our main software. Um, but we do have at the bottom three other little suites of software. We've got a Milliam and Motor Tester, which is around testing EV vehicles. Pico Diagnostics, um, which Ben's going to be using for the latter part of the video, which also incorporates our NVH testing. And then Pico Log, which is a way you can log and view um, your captures remotely. Um, not something we're going to use in today's presentation, but you can view applications on that on our YouTube site. But for now, we're concentrating on Picoscope 7, which is our main software. So here it is. Um, for those of you who haven't seen Picoscope 7 or maybe haven't even seen an oscilloscope screen before, um, you can download it and you can use it in demo mode. Um, but this is very much used, particularly with a new user in mind. So we've got for those of you who remember Picoscope 6 software, where you had a huge amount of menu functionality as soon as you opened it, what we've tried to do is slim that down. So when you first download the software, you get the basics, the what you need, but then it's fully customizable. So as you become a more advanced user, you bring more advanced menu structures onto your screen. So it's really, really nice to use. Um, <coughs> particularly good if you're using a tablet as well. So we've tried to make the buttons nice and big so you can and work with the software much easier. Um, so that's it, and we've just got there open in terms of how you pick um, a probe, um, but as we go through the hardware, you'll see BNC Plus actually does that for you now. Um, so just before we have a look, deep dive into the software, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about software evolution. So if you don't know already, we make oscilloscope kits for more than 30 of the world's leading vehicle manufacturers. Yes, a lot of that is on road, but increasingly off highway um, manufacturers as well. So we're working with them in terms of looking at issues that they might have on current vehicles, as well as working with those vehicle manufacturers, looking at the future technology. So we work on two sides of their business. And it is that work that we do in conjunction with our vehicle manufacturers that drives the software forward. So like I said earlier, the software is constantly evolving and this is really what pushes it forward. And as we change the software, as we improve the software, you can download up upgraded versions with extra features and benefits moving forward. So in terms of where to start, what I'm gonna do now, um, we are gonna run the software in demo, demo mode and we're gonna allow you to look at it. So I'm gonna pass you over to Ben and he's done a short video here taking you through downloading Picoscope 7 software, but more importantly, how you can operate it in demo mode. So even if you haven't got Picoscope yet, taking you through the main feature that you're gonna need, and also introducing you to our suite of guided tests for the off-highway market. So over to Ben. Okay, thanks for that, John. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly run through the software and some of the features, along with the new guided tests that have gone into the software lately. So without further ado, we'll start by opening the software. And we're going to just run this in demo mode. So I don't have a scope connected and we're just going to literally use the demo mode option. So click OK. What this will do is it will load in the um, demo signals in the background. So you'll have a voltage and current signal, which are active on channels A and B. Channel C is a sec or a primary ignition signal. And then channel D is a crank signal. But we're not really interested in too much of that at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on these guided tests. So make the box a little bit bigger so as you can see we have this new one which is our heavy duty and off highway tests so in this menu you will find that there are 10 new tests um, ranging from battery starting and charging tests dnox test j1939 serial decoding for can networks 
and there are some hydraulic pressure and flow tests in there as well. The relative compression test, whilst it is pretty similar to the ones that exist at the moment, there is a slight difference in the fact that we have just increased the range of the current clamp. We do find that with um, heavy duty and off highway systems, they do tend to pull more current, mainly because they have slightly bigger engines. And so the conventional guided test will only have only been, the preset only goes up to one kiloamp or 1000 amps. So we typically need to see a bit more than that. So we've just changed it and amended it slightly and put it into uh, the maximum range for the 2000 amp. So as you can see, the connection drawings are all very similar. Um, we have our example waveform and some further guidance as to see what happens when it isn't correct. And then if we minimize the screen, we have our example waveform. So from here, you'd be able to do all your same measurements. So again, this is demo mode. Like I said, I haven't got the scope connected so we can perform these measurements as we would as if we had just captured it. So again, rulers, type, signal rulers, there's two for every active um, channel, and they can be found at the top of the screen. If I just clear that again, you can see this little arrow at the top. We can see here, so if I drag those down, we can then also see the measurement in the ruler button, and then obviously in the ruler overview section as well. Within the rulers, there is quite a nice little feature where if you click on the number that you pulled your ruler down to, you can automatically set it wherever you want on the screen. So obviously changing the units will change the scaling. So also if I put that to one, uh, we'll clear all of those off again. We'll just leave that on one. So it'll do one amp and killer amp and obviously a mega amp is obviously far too far. That's uh, a unit we don't need. Okay. Adding another ruler in will then give you the difference between the two. So again, at the top here, see we've set that to zero. So let's put that to 10, for example. You can see that the software is automatically calculating the difference between the two. A little padlock to the right-hand side of that box it means you can actually lock those two rulers together and actually drag them around on the screen. This is actually more useful when we're using the time rulers. So time rulers across the bottom same principle, so drag the rulers out. If you put more than one ruler out, then it will give you the difference between the two, obviously in time. Same principle applies with the ruler, the lock symbol. So using pressing the padlock will lock those time rulers together. This is quite useful if you're looking at multiple injector signals on one screen, for example. So you could actually compare the duration or on time of that injector to another neighboring injector. Clear all the rulers, just hit the X. Okay, another little feature, um, which is one that we tend to use quite a lot, especially when you want to split the screen up, is the partitions. So, if you click rulers, you'll have the extra option here for phase rulers. Turn those on and you'll see now that the screen has been split up into four partitions because that's what the default of the software is. Now, if I move the edge or the boundary of these phase rulers, I can then start to show the different peaks and potentially what each cylinder is doing in terms of its phasing or its relationship between the others. So you can see now that I've got, if this was a four cylinder engine, my firing order would be one, three, four, two, back to number one again. But predominantly of off highway and heavy duty vehicles, it does tend to be a six cylinder. So again, we can just increase the number of partitions drag the boundaries out so we now have our six peaks so again if our firing order was a typical one five three six two four and then back to number one again turn those off just hit the off button just bring those back on again for a second because there's a nice little feature with the time rulers which actually help um, show in both degrees and in time so obviously if you have your phase rulers set up and you have them laid out on the on the actual waveform. If we drag a phase ruler in now, you can see that actually there's two units. So there is a measurement in seconds and a measurement in degrees. So if I now bring that into the partition section or the bound between the boundaries, you can now see that actually I'm measuring all the way through to 720 degrees. And then the process starts again. So it's showing you all the way, every single 720 degrees. Okay. 
switch those off. Um, another important one here then would be zoom. Tend to find we use that quite a lot. So this is a marquee zoom section. So up in the top right hand side, there is a little magnifying glass. We can click on there. And then click and drag around the parts of the waveform you'd like to investigate further. Okay. Some little extra controls on the actual zoom overview box, which are sometimes helpful. We've got these little plus and minus buttons, so they will actually increase the vertical zoom or the horizontal zoom. Okay. And then obviously the option to move around in that window to the other parts of the waveform that you'd like to see on the screen. There's a little hand option in this bottom side down here. Now that is just for panning, so you can literally click and drag on the screen. You'll also notice that when you use the zoom button, and when you've zoomed in around a section of the waveform, these two blue arrows will appear either side of the screen. So you've got this one here, and this one here. These will basically move either frame by frame, so just basically take that zoom box and move it along one. Or if you click and hold, it will actually scroll through the waveform. To get back to the main window or back to a previous view, you've got these two options here. So there is the undo and then the one-to-one -one function. So the undo button will take you back to the previous zoom and the one-to-one -one take you all the way back to the main window. If you see anywhere in the software, these little eye symbols, they actually have some extra information. So there you go. So a mouse, enable zoom and draw around the box. Touch, pinch to zoom, drag to pan. So again, if you're using a touch screen, there are some different controls now that will work even better with PS7. Again, to clear the zoom, you can actually just hit the X and then the zoom button cuts appears back up in the top right hand corner. Okay, so taking a look at a few of the other guided tests within the new heavy duty and off highway section, we have these two battery tests at the top. Um, the reason why there is two is based on the connection how we connect to the battery in order to get the information. So what we do is we just quickly look at the in-series one, and mainly because that actually gives us a bit more information regarding things like the link lead voltage drop. And it's all done with how we connect to the, or how we set up the scope and connect to the batteries. Now, the, um, the other guided test, the um, in-parallel test, actually measures each battery individually. So literally you'd use two test leads, um, you'd have your red to black on positive and negative for um, one channel, and then on channel B, you'd have uh, positive and negative, obviously, on the signal and ground one as well, as well there. Now, with this test, obviously, the connection is slightly different, and we've included some additional maths, which allows us to look at the individual batteries and their voltages, but also measure the link lead volt drop across this area. So, obviously, during cranking, if there is a high resistance within this link lead, we should actually be able to pick it up because the voltage drop between the two batteries is going to show us that up and actually give us the information that we need to determine which battery is at fault or whether or not it's a, an issue with the link lead itself. So let's minimize the guided test and just have a little look within this guided test. So we have our total battery voltage in blue at the top. We have our green and blue down here. Now these are the two different batteries. Now You'll notice in channel B doesn't hasn't been changed its name. Now that's because we're really only interested in the mathematical chart, the mathematical side. So the mass channel is basically subtracting total voltage away from channels B and C. So you end up with the starter side and then the ground side battery. So they are our two voltages. And then the main system current coming in. So if we wanted to do some power measurements and some um, things like that, we can actually do some easy maths from there. And then we'll obviously have the link lead volt drop across the two. Some measurements have been put in place across the bottom. Um, they're in the medium view at the moment, but you can change that to large. So actually just make it a bit easier to see them on the screen, especially if you're working um, sort of further away from the laptop. A really nice little test and obviously there's nothing you need to do in terms of setup you literally just have to follow the connection diagram crank the engine get it to start and then that is it the software will do everything else for you so we feel like this is a really really nice test especially for 24 volt systems
let's just look at one more test. And we are going to look at the um, electronically controlled unit injectors. Click the guide and settings. Again, we are going to look at how the connection is made. So this is going to look at both the um, supply and the switched side or hot and cold side, depending on um, the terminology, as well as the current as well. So we're going to have all of this on one screen. As with all the guided tests, bit of information in there, bit of how the operation, how it works. Um, there's some extra detail here about where you have on some engines the um, needle valve and spill valve operation, how you can record both of those on the same screen. Okay, but we're just going to look at a reference here. So again, this is all within the software. I've not connected or not created any of these, uh, any of these waveforms. These are just built into the software, ready for people to have a look at and have a bit of a play. So again, all I was doing there on the side was just clicking and dragging just to move them around on the screen, just to make it a little bit more visible, split those signals up. Another little feature within here is scaling. So if you found that your signals are a little bit um, too encroaching, you can actually hover over the axis and you'll see there it's actually got uh, a little double headed arrow. Now, using a scroll wheel on a mouse, mouse or if you were using a touch screen, you could pinch and just change the scaling. So you see how now I'm just reducing the size of that signal. All I'm doing is just changing the scale. Another way of viewing that is within the channel options and clicking on display. And you see now my scale is 0.6. Now I can increase that from this window as well and just keep going. And there you'll see also the offset. So that exactly does the same thing as what I was doing when I'm moving and clicking and dragging the axis with the mouse cursor. The important feature within this, um, if you were looking at injectors, say this is a capture from a known good vehicle that you've been looking at, you can create a reference of this. So to create a reference, we go to reference waveforms. If it's not on this side toolbar, click on more, and then reference waveforms is up here. Just while we're in this panel, any of these highlighted stars you can configure and load into your tool panel on the left hand side. So say if I wanted full screen, you can now see full screen has appeared in there. Just means you don't have to keep coming in and out of this extra more panel. So reference waveforms, select the ones you want to make a reference of. Say for example, I want to do all three. You can now rename these as say maybe um, injector one. Uh, this would be the supply, injector two, uh, sorry, in, still injector one, but um, is now the, uh, let's just call it ground. And channel C is our injector one current. So what you may have noticed is now that I've actually got these additional axes on the screen so if I was to click and drag them around you can see how they are a carbon copy or like a screenshot of the channels that I've just made the reference from. Now this can all start getting a bit cluttered on the screen now so what uh, a little tip here um, is to actually create a new viewport and just have your references in one and then your live signals in another. So to do that we click on views we're going to add a scope view. You see now how it's put a bunch of uh, those waveforms in underneath. But looking at how we want to manipulate these two on the screen, so go back to scope one and you'll notice that the highlighted tab has changed its color. So it's become a darker blue color. So scope one. Now I want to keep that as my references. So I'm going to hide the active channels at A, B, and C and just keep my references there. So inject the one supply, inject the one ground, inject the one current. So now you can see that there are slightly different shade of the original waveforms. Now on scope two, actually it's just literally already keep keeping the active channels for me. So there's nothing more I have to do other than just separating them out a little bit and just making it a bit easier to see everything on the screen. Okay. Now, if I was to run this, now obviously this uh, software is in demo mode, so it's going to do something a bit weird and wonderful, but what we should see is that our references in the top view don't change. So we'll click start. 
let the software do its thing. So now we can see, like I said, there are going to be some weird and wonderful patterns going on underneath. But the important bit is that the top view has kept the original reference waveforms and we can perform all of our measurements as we would as if we were looking at a live um, a live waveform as well. But what's nice is that now you can directly compare the two. So if things like engine speed are slightly different, you can actually get everything on the screen um, and do your measurements accordingly. If at any point you get in a real muddle, um, if you hit the reset configuration, it will revert back, change everything back to the original setup and hopefully put everything back to normal for you. Okay, there's a very, very brief look um, at the software. Um, I hope that helps and I will pass you back to John and we'll continue with the presentation. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting um, and you can just start to see how you could make a start working with Picoscope. So that's our software for this. And of course, the other important part here is the hardware that we create. Um, so let's have a wander through. BNC Plus is the latest um, generation of connectivity. So for those of you who have used oscilloscopes before, you'll be fairly familiar with BNC connectors. What we've got with BNC Plus is some additional connectivity with the component. This does a number of things, but more importantly, it gives us power to those components. So previously, before we would have had to have had um, batteries in current clamps and things like that, we don't need that anymore. Um, so no longer when you're running parasitic drain measurements do you have to worry about a battery running out. Actually, it's just powered directly through from the scope. Um, it also means that when you connect a component into the front of the scope, the, the software knows what you've just connected. And it'll point you in the right direction. So if you don't connect the right component for the test you're trying to run, it'll tell you to move to, move to a different probe or to carry on. So it's really, really powerful. So for a new user, it's going to make your life easier. But for a much more advanced user, it's just going to make your diagnostic process and your setup faster so you can capture more quickly. Um, so just a little bit of detail in terms of probe mismatch. So you remember earlier Ben showing you the guided test where you download a guided test. The software is expecting you to connect certain accessories or components to each of the channels in the scope if you get it wrong it tells you so you can see this little graphic here and as ben runs you through later actually working i'm sure he'll just show you again how that works so you know on channel a there it's expecting a resistance lead just in our example we've just put a standard test lead it's telling you that it's wrong so effectively you can then change the correct lead on the correct channel because if you look at what we've done there in A and B, it's got the right connections, but in the wrong order. So just making sure that you've got the connections in the right order for running the test the way that, that the scope's expecting you or the software's expecting you to running that test. So yeah, really, really powerful probe mismatch. If you get some connection wrong, it just pushes you back online. So in terms of connecting to components, here we have our 4425A um, off-highway scope with our boot, and we've got a number of connecting optic options. So in this case, start always with our times one test lead. So we've got those in four colours. So you've always got four test leads for each of the colours on the front of the scope. So that being blue, red, yellow, and green. And then on the end of that scope lead, we've got a, a number of adapters that you can use to make your connection. Backpinning probes there being the most popular, tend to be the most valuable, but there are loads of different ways, different connection leads right the way through to this really, really great set of, um, yeah, correct connection leads. Then we've got current clamps, and again, huge advantage of BNC Plus, 2000 amp clamp there, but no battery needed, so you're taking the power through from the scope. Um, then we've got resistance leads and then round to pressure. So that's a WPS 600 pressure transducer designed for hydraulics. And then right the way through to the flow meter, which we're going to see later on. So that's the way that we can look at hydraulic flow. 
So to the kits themselves, so we have three levels of off-highway kit. So we have an entry-level kit, which gives you the basics, an expert, which then includes your WPS 600 pressure transducer right the way through to the elite kit, which really gives you everything you're going to need apart from the flow meter to start working on off-highway equipment and be able to do really, really advanced diagnostics. So there's also an off-highway page which will take you through some of the basic testing capabilities as well as shows you through all of the guided tests that we're going to talk about today. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to pass you over to Ben, and he's actually going to unbox uh, the Elite kit and take you through each of those components in this really, really advanced Picascope kit. So over to you, Ben. Okay, cheers, John. Right, let's have a quick look at what you get in the kit. So as John's already explained, there are three different kits available. So the entry the Expert and then the Elite. So what we have here is the Elite kit, so everything's involved. Obviously the Expert and the Elite, which are versions of that with slightly left bits. So let's get into the crux of it. So what we'll do is just put that one slightly to one side and we'll start with the main kit itself. So the entry kit comes with all the sort of basic stuff. Now, as we said, this is the Elite, so everything's involved in this kit. The big main differences are the boot itself and the scope. So the scope is still the normal 44258A automotive scope, so a four-channel scope with Pico BNC Plus, but obviously you have a slightly more protected boot. So on the top there is like a silicon lid. Um, it's not IP rated, it is better protected though, okay? So just bear that in mind. Um, other than that, the scope is exactly the same underneath. So still USB 2 and USB 3 at the back. USB cables actually just will go with that to start with. Um, there are two, so there's the standard USB 3 cable, and then we have the longer four and a half meter USB 2 lead. So that does actually start to become really useful when you're on some of the bigger machinery. Clamps wise, obviously the entry and the expert kit come with the slightly smaller TA496 clamp. It's a great little camp, it really is. It's nice and compact, gets into a lot of places and access is, uh, access is a little bit tricky, especially on some of the smaller machines, it's almost impossible. So the smaller clamp, the better. This features obviously in the two beginner kits and then obviously in the expert kit, we have the slightly more, um, more premium clamp, the 60 amp BNC plus clamp, slightly bigger, uh, hole for the current for the wires to get through um, but this is great for sort of smaller current so parasitic drain and things like that it's really good for. Obviously the 2000 amp clamp is included and that's great for all your relative compression testing. This can also be used for some other actuator tests so for things like injectors and um, we saw or we will see on this machine actually the injector current is around about 13 14 amps this is pretty good sort of down to sort of 10 amps especially so you could actually in effect use this one along with this one to do sort of multiple injector testing should you need to right let's just move all of these bits out of the way Back pinning probes, obviously they come with a lot of our kits. Uh, great for back pinning. Um, you obviously get multiple different, there's a couple of different sizes in there, obviously with replacement tips. What we try to do with this um, kit is remove some of the things that are gonna be less important. So what you won't find in here is like the small crocodile clips, but you will have obviously the big battery clips. Uh, really good, really strong, good grip. Um, four of those for maybe if you're doing 24 volt um, battery starting tests. Flexible back pinning probes, uh, again, when tight and access is tricky, they're obviously the ones that are going to be there getting you out of problems. Included with the Expert and the Elite kit are controversial, I know, um, are the piercing probes. A lot of manufacturers don't like you doing it, However, having been in a situation where you're in the middle of nowhere, there is nothing around you, you may be stuck in a field somewhere and you need to get that, you need to get that confirmation, insulation piercing probes are gonna get you that if access is really, really restricted. 
What I will say is always, please bear in mind, you don't need to screw all the way through the cable because you will just pierce all the way through it. Just need to make slight contact and just touch through onto the actual wiring. Once you've done that and removed, please, please, please ensure you do a correct um, repair. So that may be um, silicon paint um, you can actually get, or nail varnish, something that's gonna stop water getting in because anything machinery and off-highway wise, it's gonna be outdoors, all right? So please, please, please make sure if you are gonna do that, to make sure that you repair it properly. Okay, some other things that are involved in the Elite kit that aren't necessarily in the other two kits. Coil and plug probe, why is that in there? We are starting to see more and more off-highway and agricultural machinery going to things like um, hydrogen, um, methane engines, especially for CNH. Um, JCB are all over their hydrogen engines. So bear that in mind, it is gonna be using secondary or certainly spark ignition. With that in mind, secondary ignition is need, gonna be needed. Again, access is a nightmare. So the flexible coil and plug probe is gonna be what you're gonna be looking for. Don't forget that this can also be used for other things. So if you've got an injector that's really hard to get to that you can't back pin and you just want some confirmation, is, some, is there activity there? Press the wand on top of the plug and you'll be surprised at the amount of detail that you can get just from this device. Okay times 10 leads again anything can relate it or again if you're not sure of the voltage for example from an injector use your times 10 leads the scope itself is a 200 volt scope as it always has been um, for the last sort of 4425 4425a range however there are some injectors out there where you might not be sure better to be safe than sorry just use the times 10 probes Standard test leads are in here. These are the five meter version though. So again, uh, giving you more access, a bit more um, ease of connection. So if your scope's at one end of the machine and you need to get to the other, well actually, if you put your scope in the middle, you've got 10 meters worth of, um, worth of flexibility there. Right, some of the extra feature things that are in all of the kits actually, um, but all we do is we just double up on certain ones as we go through the different levels. So entry starts off with slightly fewer, but these dedicated breakout leads. I can't stress how useful these are. Obviously, we're not gonna be able to cover every make and manufacture. However, the ones that I do tend to find quite a lot of, we've made sure that they are in these kits. So for example, TA190, it's a pretty much a very standard injector. If we look at anything like the after treatment system on the Bosch Denoxtronic 2.2, it is that injector, that's the breakout lead for it. Okay, so really, really useful. Other dedicated off-highway breakout leads, we obviously have the four pin Deutz connectors, and there is a large connector as well, which if anybody working on CNH machinery, Case New Holland, that's the injector plug that goes into the actual head. Very, very easy now to make a connection. Really, really useful. Okay. Couple other little bits. Um, there is a resistance lead, which is featured, I think, in all of the kits. So it, from the entry kit all the way up to the Elite, you will get the resistance lead. You can only use the resistance lead with the 4425A scope, Pico B and C plus, remember. Temperature probes, something that is missing from the 4425 range where we didn't have Pico B and C plus, temperature sensors. When it comes to hydraulic systems, sometimes you just want validation of you know, if we are doing this sort of predictive maintenance style thing, you wanna make sure that your test is done in the same way. So making sure you've got a temperature reading is actually really important. So it's a contact temperature sensor. It is also submersible. So if you wanted to, you could in theory put it into the hydraulic tank and actually get your temperature, hydraulic oil temperature from the reservoir itself or attach it in some way to actually to a pipe somewhere. So I tend to use, um, the battery clips are quite good actually, you can sometimes use them to connect onto things. Um, other little clamps out there, you know, we get sort of the um, curtain uh, clamps actually quite good. They can actually clip on, they give you a bit more space and obviously they're, uh, they're, they're plastic as well, so they won't um, hopefully not melt. But <laughs> So anyway, we can get that temperature probe connected to a component. It's obviously gonna give you a temperature reading that you can use in the future. Okay, so that's kind of the main kit, if you like, the sort of the scope side of it. Obviously, you'll notice from the expert and the elite kit, actually, we start to include some pressure analysis equipment. So let's move these bits out of the way. 
and we'll get the WPS 500 carry case. Now, in the expert kit, we include some very, it's a very stripped back version of the WPS 500 kit. So all we're doing, we're not doing, because the likelihood of doing any in-cylinder work on these machines is almost impossible. Um, so taking all the compression stuff away, um, so all we're going to be left with is the actual WPS 500 unit itself, the exhaust probe, the flexible probe, obviously the little bleed off pipe, and some of these T pieces. Now these allow you to get into connection for sort of low pressure fuel work. Um, again, injector leak off, that's always quite a nice one to see how each injector is performing and feeding back into the return line. Exhaust, again, nice and non-intrusive test. Exhaust pulse is the result of everything. So combustion, which is air intake and fuel, compression. In theory, all of your pulses should be even. If they're not, we need to start looking and evaluating somewhere else. The flexible, the flexible pipe, that can be used for crankcase pressure. Again, if you've got any um, wear on the actual cylinders and the piston rings themselves, we'll obviously get excessive flow by. Put this into the dipstick tube, you'll start to see that and you'll get those pulses coming back through. Again, if you're doing any fuel work and you're using WPS as to put the flow through, we're gonna need a bleed return, so hence that pipe being in there as well. Okay. So that's part of the expert kit. So some nice non-intrusive testing that is possible with all of that. Moving up to the elite kit, that now includes the hydraulic pressure transducers. So this is WPS 600, neatly wrapped up. Again, make sure that they are all charged up and it's the same for WPS 500, they are still battery powered. So we wanna make sure before going to use, make sure they're fully charged. Again, two ranges, 660 bar, and it is a fast response 10 kilohertz um, pressure transducer, so allowing you to capture all of those spikes and pressure changes that are rapidly changing within the hydraulic system. Two sensors, well, that allows you to now do a differential. So if you, had, um, if you wanted to do a delta P across this component, so say you had a hydraulic ram, you've put your test points in at either end, you can now do the pressure drop across that cylinder. Same as what you'd do if you were looking at one of the hydraulic motors, again, looking at your delta P across that component. Then what we can do is in software is actually use maths to actually calculate that difference as well. So again, making it a lot more easier. Again, recording all of the data, that's the most important part. Okay, that was a bit of a <laughs> blast around all of the different kits. Um, I hope that helps. Um, and back to you, John.